Hello there, Gemini. Welcome to your reading. So um, when I was meditating on this spread for you, for uh, the reading for this month, what I saw was um, I see these two teenagers. The man is giving the woman a flower. And they're both like clearly, you know, it's like the beginning stages of a brand new love. And he's giving the this girl, this teenager, a flower. And then the, there are thought bubbles going through his head. And you see the thought bubbles, and uh, it shows him much older, probably like in his 60s or 70s, and then the same woman next to him. So what that denotes to me is that I feel like, you know, when you want to go ahead with something, once you have made up your mind and once you are sure that you want to proceed with a specific course of action, you're in it for keeps. So I feel like, you know, Geminis often get a bad rep as being fickle, as being kind of like that social butterfly, or even being someone who's not dependable. But I feel like that's that's that runs counter to your to the way that you actually think and to the way in which you actually execute plans, okay? So you guys are very, very idealistic and in a way hopeless romantics. And I feel as if once you have a lot of choices that are in front of you, you might be inundated with those choices and you don't act. And people might feel like you're wishy-washy. But I feel that the life of a Gemini person is you're out looking for the best optimal outcome. Because you're very idealistic, because you're very, very, you know, just hopelessly romantic you think very carefully before you make a decision and you project and overthink and overanalyze and you project into the future if i go with this specific course of action what is my life going to look like and as a result of that you don't make these decisions lightly okay and so when you make an offer to a specific person, when you give your 100% to a job, when you accept a job offer, when you tell somebody, okay, I'm going to do this with you, or, you know, we're in it together, or, you know, let's get this done. You mean it and you do keep your word. And I also feel as if for many of you, you keep your word to the extent that if everybody in the situation, in that relationship, or in that work environment, or in that social interaction, if everyone keeps their word, if everything, if everyone keeps things light, and if everyone does their part, then there shouldn't be any problem. You shouldn't anticipate problems, right? So the image of this this teenage boy giving this flower making a gesture towards this teenage girl i feel as if it's the start of something that is really hopeful that has a lot of promise and it's something you have really carefully weighed out the options like should i or shouldn't i is this somebody that's going to be with me for the long haul because you are looking for long term you are looking for something stable something dependable and something that is um that's going to be around even into your old age okay so you don't make decisions lightly and i feel like uh whenever a gemini doesn't commit it's mainly because they don't see the full longevity or the sustaining power of a situation and that's why they don't really commit and that's why they can appear to be a little bit more aloof a little bit more like um, one foot out the door but i feel like innately you guys understand that everything takes a lot of responsibility in order to make something work we have to constantly work at it and it can feel like it sucks the fun out of the situation when it requires a lot of work and as a result of that i'm sensing that's why some of you might have shied away from situations from getting involved in situations getting involved with specific people moving forward mainly because you understand that it's a lot of responsibility and if your heart is not 100 percent uh, in it because you feel like the situation is not bringing you enough stability that's when this you know the the twin side comes out and you oscillate between 
making the decision and that's when you become indecisive and that's when people see you as flighty um the other image that i saw too and that's funny this came out because uh, i did see a hobo on a train okay it's a moving train and i feel like it's um it's not so much in the continental us it seems like it's some foreign country like a european city that's what it feels like to me and there's this train going through like um a pastoral a more agrarian landscape okay and these are like freight trains and there's this man he's a he's a hobo and he's jumping from trains to trains he's trying to find his next location he's got that little bundle of all of his possessions okay all of his possessions are bundled up in a little sack and he's carrying that with him and I feel like this year and especially the month of March is a major major new beginning type of a year type of a month for you where you have shed a lot of baggage and I do feel shedding baggage with uh, getting rid of people in your life that might have been sucking your energy that might not have been good for you to be around and ways of doing too in the past uh, not taking um, opportunities not being you know quick enough not being decisive enough on opportunities and then as a result of it I just feel like you're looking for a little bit of a, a brand new adventure okay so I'm seeing a lot of that energy um, across the entire spectrum of the zodiac because I feel like the month of February was February was just a very very intense month and thank God it's it's so short okay we only had 28 days but I feel like every day brought about events situations coming to light um, a, a lot of unearthing a lot of digging a lot of uh, investigations and just the energy was very 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 tense and it feels like all the unearthing was condensed into the entire month of February. We found out a lot about people. We People communicated in a way where it's like um, issuing ultimatums, issuing, you know, very, very definitive, like yes and no's. And I also feel like coming on the heels of that as we progress into the month of March, and in particular for you guys, um, you're learning how important it is to be very, very decisive. You're learning how important it is to make a resolution and really, really sticking to it. Because I do feel for, for many of you, you know, like back in that mid-month reading, choices were being stripped away. Choices were removed from the table. Things that we thought might have been, you know, plan B, plan C, plan D, those choices get taken away from us. And so we have to, you know, really look at the, the consequences of our actions. And we really have to, to like value everything that was on the table and to really analyze situations in a way where we have to be decisive. We can't fall back on safety nets. We can't assume that something, some situation is always going to be there. And we definitely can't assume that we can rely on other people. Okay, so I feel like it was a major 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 wake up call across the board for a lot of the signs and it was just a very very intense month where truths come to light information uh, gets revealed and I almost feel like the end of February was like that moment where the, the, the tension dissipates and you can like finally exhale that sigh of relief like okay everything is done and so when we move into the month of March I do see this brand new energy that is on the table for you okay this is really really beautiful the full signals a clean page a brand new journey uh, heading into the unknown and having basically traveling light because you have shed a lot of baggage this came about after a very long period where you felt like you were in the public eye you were under scrutiny you were like being judged you were being put i almost feel like put in the limelight 
and you had to explain yourself. You had to account for what you were doing. You had to, um, I'm seeing like, you know, it's almost like that Salem witch trial, okay? Being burned at the stake, but not littered, literally. It's just like, here are the things that I did, and here are the justifications for why I did those things. Here are the dates that they happen, and here are the justifications for why they happen on that date and not a particular date. So I feel like many of you have gone through some type of a grueling or, or a grilling process. You might be doing this to another person, like asking them, digging for information, or somebody might be doing this to you, asking them, digging for information from them or from you and I feel like you know it's an, a major unearthing process okay um, so the energy was very very tense the latter part of February and now we're breaking free now we're in a position where we can start making decisions again if you have felt that decisions were were made um, and you were just kind of like stuck in the middle of it. Decisions were made in your environment and you felt that loss of control. I feel like this is the month where you start to get back or regain your sense of composure and regain your control. You show up here as the magician. And the thing about the magician, especially in this deck, is this is all indicative of sleight of hands, okay? This is all about revealing certain things, but holding back on certain things. So um, I don't want to say this phrase, but I feel like that's what it, it boils down to, uh, line by omission, withholding the truth or giving half truths. And I feel like you're doing this mainly because you're keeping your cards close to your chest. You're possibly trying to protect something or you are drawing um, attention away from a specific area and you're trying to get the people to focus on a another area and the way that i'm seeing this is i feel like many of you have a bird's eye view of a situation we have here the two of wands this is what i call like the ivory tower okay the birds are flying above him he's got like a bird's eye view of a situation he sees the situation in its totality he knows the pitfalls he understands and so it's almost like oftentimes when you know so much when you can project so far into the future that you know okay if i were to take you know or if we were to take plan a here are some of the pitfalls that will will have to encounter or overcome further down the line and then if we make, you know, uh, plan B, here is what's going to happen. So you're in a position where I feel like you know too much and some of the information that you're privy to, you can't really disclose it. People might be telling you secrets or people might give you a lot of information. And I feel like some of the information might be confidential. And so you're acting and making decisions from a place of full disclosure, full knowledge. And the people that are around you that you're trying to convince, you're trying to show them the merits of what you're doing and why you do the things that you do, they don't have the full information and you can't share with them the full information. And so you have to find a way to kind of work around this situation and to show them and convince them on the best course of action without revealing too much. I see many of you are in a position where you are either possibly taking the blame for somebody or defending somebody, protecting somebody, and not revealing all the information that may, might make this person suffer the wrath of you know the crowd okay so I, I definitely see this energy here about withholding information because you want to protect somebody withholding information or even you know th this whole concept about a red herring distracting and and drawing the 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 crowd and drawing the herd and drawing attention to this big 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 situation 
because the other things are there and people are questioning the wrong things or focus on the wrong thing. So you're trying to divert attention away from things that don't matter and bringing that attention to things that you feel might be, there might be more at stake. There might be more at stake, okay? Um, I do see you coming in to diffuse a situation and I definitely see you in a position where you are harboring somebody, aiding somebody, and um, protecting somebody. Protecting somebody that you feel, this little monkey here, somebody that you feel behaved in a foolish manner, in a reckless manner, in an irresponsible manner. They didn't mean it, they didn't know better, and so let's not judge, let's not punish them harshly because all of their mistakes or, or, or all the things that they did came from a place of innocence. So I, I definitely feel like you're doing a lot of legwork here, trying to protect another person, okay? Um, I feel like somebody is really reaching out trying to help you. If you are in this hangman position where you feel like your hands are tied, that you're not able to get things moving, gain traction, gain momentum in a project, in a situation to even persuade people I f or even communicate with people. So if there has been like um, some type of a conflictual situation in your life and you're, you're either dealing with people who are very fixed and very rigid or you are so convinced on a specific course of action that you might be a little bit more like, you know, this is the way that it has to be. I feel like there's somebody coming in showing you a different way, okay? This is usually, we have here the Page of Wands, and I feel like this is a person coming in. It's almost like um, they're, coming in, they're, they're coming in at a very opportune moment. It's, it's almost like that, that last split second they come in and they give you some insights they give you some information that will change the trajectory of how things are being conveyed that will allow more understanding more communication to come into the picture you're dealing with a lot of younger people but the youth also denotes to me the innocence okay they're not plagued with your sense of overthinking, overanalyzing, um, looking so far ahead into a specific course of action. When we do that, we see so many pitfalls and then it makes us kind of scared to make a decision. It makes us scared to act. It makes us scared to choose a specific course of action. This youthful, innocent energy that's coming through for you, I feel like they have a different vantage point. It's very ground level, it's very practical, okay? Whereas you have the bird's eye view, more of the higher chakra, overthinking, overanalyzing. This person is on the ground level. They're the foot soldier. They're the ones that see how things are being played out on the ground. They're seeing things physically and I feel like they're telling you or they're showing you or, or giving you a different vantage point, a different perspective. And I feel like this is a perspective you might not have considered. And I'm seeing fire energy, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. And with fire energies, Fire signs are very, very, um, some might say impulsive, but I would say they're very, very direct and very blunt, okay? And fire signs are, in a way, when they see a problem, they dive right in and they fix it, okay? They don't think, they don't sit there and think about like, well, is this a solution that's going to be viable 10 years from now? Is it a uh, long-term sustainable solution? They don't care about that stuff. They care about what can I do to alleviate the situation right now? They care about what's immediately in front of them. We're not talking about a five-year plan. We're talking about like a five-day plan. 
and I feel like this is a really, really, really kind person. I just can't. They're really, really kind. Okay, this is a card about generosity. This is a card as well about, you know, um, helping people who are in dire straits, helping others. And we don't need to expect anything in return. So like loving and, and giving and being generous without strings attached. That's the way fire signs work. They think about, you know, what can I do in this specific moment in time to alleviate a situation? And I feel like the, the innocent and pure and direct way in which they behave, despite their biological age, despite their lack of, you know, life experience. And I feel like this is a person, they've been on the ground, they've, they've rolled in the trenches, so they know that, you know, life is rough. It's not like they're idealistic. You guys, I feel like, are very idealistic. You're thinking more about theories. This person is thinking more about practice. And I feel like they're bringing to you, they're bringing a message that's very, very urgent about, they're, they're bringing to you a message that is very urgent about needs, about generosity, about the need to, you know, help out a situation a need I'm seeing like um, humanitarian needs okay so what really really stirs a, a Gemini's heart and Gemini people love animals love children you love that innocence because you guys are perpetually you're like the the little sprite the, the Peter Pan of the Zodiac. Um, you believe in magic. You believe in innocence. You believe in all these ideals. And I feel like for many of you, you go through life and you know, we all get battered by life. Some of us become jaded. Others of us still maintain our innocence. And I feel like you might be at that tipping point. Like so many bad people out there, so many bad things have happened. And it's it's made you a little bit rough around the edges. It's made you develop thicker skin. And you're kind of like straddling that fine line between becoming jaded or still maintaining your innocence. Some of you could feel a little bit jaded. And I feel like there's somebody coming into the picture. Not that they're idealistic, but they do what what they feel needs to be done they do what is right and their sense of justice and morality and just you know this this carefree attitude okay heading straight into the volcano because there's probably distressed people out there that i can help okay heading straight into a situation because i'm curious what it's going to look like so their sense of adventure their sense of right and wrong their sense of you know that devil may care energy it's really refreshing to you and i feel like this person is bringing so much of a perspective to you that you hadn't considered and in a way they're pulling you away from this sense of jadedness and they're telling you you know you you don't need to get jaded over this this these situations that you have dealt with in the past that has you know created those frown lines that has uh, racked you with anxieties and a lot of worry and that makes you you know isolate yourself from the world because you feel like you can't trust people or you feel like people are all a certain way i feel like this person is showing you that life doesn't have to be like that you just need to keep better company you just need to keep better company. You need to keep the company of the people that are more in alignment with you. You need to be careful about who you let into your life and you need to make sure they are of the higher vibrational, you know, energies so that they don't suck you dry, so that they don't take advantage of you, so that you they don't constantly make these foolish mistakes and need you to come in to correct the situation or need you to protect them. It's like hiding behind mommy's skirt because we can't clean up our own mess, okay? So I feel like 
they're telling you, pick better people to be around, pick better situations to put yourself in. You don't have to get jaded over things. You learn from things and you move on. So there's a lot to be said here <clears throat> about forging a new path for yourself. Definitely. Um, I am seeing that you're, you're seeing the value in a person that you might not have seen before. I'm also seeing a, a very intense, intense sense of longing between you and another person. It flows mutually because with the Six of Pentacles, it's a card about reciprocity. Um, it flows both ways, okay? It's reciprocity. This is long distance relationship, usually for me, Two of Wands, and then the Fool. Somebody might have left the picture or has gone a, a different way, has gone a different route, and there's a sense of longing. There's a sense of, I'm stuck where I am right now. I'm afraid to move forward with this person. I'm afraid by being reckless, by, by following this person, I might be ostracized. I might be burned at the stake. I might be under a lot of scrutiny. But I feel like, you know, that hobo on the train. You want something new. You want to travel light. You want to just leave your past behind you and start over in a foreign land, in a new environment. You, you see the merit in starting over and you see the merit in moving forward with a new situation, okay? Um, I'm going to pull out a few more cards because we have a person here as well in the last four cards and I'm trying to see what I can pick up. So who is this water sign? Okay. So let me talk about this water sign. I have here the Queen of Cups, and this is Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. This is a really kind person as well, okay? You, you've got some really good people in your environment, like really good-hearted, honest, straight-laced, moral, moral, um, just amazingly generous people. So this is somebody that is um, that you're giving a lot of your your energy to. Okay, so he's leaning more towards this side, and she she's on this side. So this could be male or female, but there's a lot of attention, a lot of uh, nurturing, a lot of sustenance being given to this water sign. For some of you, you might be in a marriage, committed relationship, the hierophant here with this water sign. You might have built a lot of resources together. You might have children together. The Ten of Pentacles is generational wealth. The two of you might have created like a dynasty together. It's like a power couple type of a dynamics. A lot of resources, a lot of stability, a lot of things built up. Commonalities, common goals, common grounds. Two people who are very, very successful. I see you as being very successful here with the Magician. And I usually think with a magician, it's somebody with like higher education. You guys are really, really intelligent. And usually with a lot of air signs, they love school. They love an environment that's more theoretical, that's that's more like intellectually stimulating. So they would, you know, pursue the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, the law degree, the PhD. Like they, they go the whole nine yards when it comes to their education. So I feel many of you have advanced degrees. And they themselves have advanced degrees. So I, I see an environment where two people, you might have a different life path, they might have a different career path, for example, but I feel like there is this sense of both parties being very, very, very accomplished, okay? So you, there's a power couple dynamics here. Um, I feel like you might have more of a humanitarian streak. You might want to go where the the wounded are you might want to go where where you're needed where there's a need for your skills and your services the other person might be a little bit more stabilized they might be a little bit more of a homebody they might be a little bit more grounded in their current location and i feel like as a couple 
two people um, might want to live in different places and that's kind of creating a little bit of a discord like a disruption or uh, is throwing a wrench in the works is throwing the wrench in the works in a situation so that that's what I'm feeling and I'm also feeling they might be homesick somebody might be feeling homesick okay like if they moved with you to where you are they might be feeling homesick and they might want to return to a like wherever they grew up or if you move to be where they are you might be feeling homesick and you might want to return to your origin or you might be lusting after a new situation a new environment a new city a new job a new just something that really stirs your passion so I definitely feel like a situation where um, somebody's homesick somebody wants something new not a new relationship but I feel like you know homesickness wanting to return to the roots um, so that's what I'm feeling here and um, I feel like this this water sign the dynamics between you and this person their energy is very loving they're not super adventurous they're not super adventurous they kind of like nibble at life a little bit they test the waters they stick their toes in to see how cold it is but i feel like you know they're not ones to like dive right in to a situation get their hands dirty roll up their sleeves and do things whereas i feel like gemini's you guys are very much very spontaneous let's jump right in let's head towards this volcano and so you're you're still going through this phase where you're you are thirsting after adventure and then this person is a little bit more stability oriented I don't see problems so much I, I don't see that at all and I feel like you're accommodating a lot with this person to this person you're accommodating them and you're giving a lot of time and energy and I also feel like I don't know if there's resentment or I don't know if there is just like uh, the sense within you about you know opportunity costs like I've given a lot to this this relationship and I, f I, I thought it was the right thing to do because we were in it together but now I feel like you know life has passed me by missed opportunities has passed me by I was on the sidelines nibbling at life and I let a lot of good things or good opportunities or you know just opportunities like like slipping by and the thing about opportunity costs you know it's like that we can only we only know the life that we have chosen we don't know how an alternative like in an alternate reality if we had taken a different path what our life would look like we, we don't know those things and because we don't know and because you guys are an air sign you need to know the unknown is always 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 more enticing because it's a mystery to you guys so that's where I want you to understand that's the attraction that's the pull you're being drawn and pulled towards the unknown the route that you didn't take and it's always in the back of your mind but because we live in this physical world and we are only aware of the series of decisions that we make to get us to this present moment and if the present moment is less than what we idealistically expected when we were kids you know like that that little teenage boy given the teenage girls that that flower when he gave her his flower when he gave her his heart when he made those promises he 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 thinks oh we're gonna grow old together whether or not that's the, the case whether or not you know life reality or, or or choices and decisions and and you know uh, life just catches up to us and things become more complicated I feel things are complicated but I definitely feel like you're yearning for a life that is a little bit more simplistic 
like that hobo on the train, you know, all his possessions in one bag, hopping from one boxcar to the next, and not having a care in the world, and flying from one city to the next, one adventure to the next, one life to the next, and getting to experience, you know, many, many, many different lives, getting to experience many different situations. I feel like you're drawn to that and you're wondering if there's room in your life to allow those opportunities to come in again. Can you make room? Can you, you know, rearrange the furniture, move some things around in order to make the space and make the room for these missed opportunities to come back? If you reserve the space for it, it will come back. If you really, really want it and you actively put your energy out there, it will come back. So what exactly does that mean? It basically means realizing what's really important to us, prioritizing those things. If many of you have, you know, wanted to travel, like uh, wanted to work and travel overseas, and you're just like, oh, I have the wife, the kids, the mortgage, uh, or the husband, the, the, the kids and the mortgage. Or, you know, I have this really, really cushy, stable job and people need me. I'm very visible and, you know, I've made it. I, I've climbed the corporate ladder. There are other ways that you can do it. You can do, you know, volunteerism. You can take time out of your um, busy schedule to, you know, plan a vacation where you can do some meaningful work. It requires rearranging things that might have been sedentary in your life. Rearrange them, clear some space, declutter in order to create the life that we want, okay? It doesn't happen overnight. It requires a lot more planning. The more things we have in our possessions, the more things that we have weighing us down, the more clearing we have to do so that those things don't run our lives. And the, the, the longer we have them, the more sedentary and heavy they are. So you have some decluttering, I feel, that you have to do in order for you to make room for the things that you want. And um, what I'm feeling here is there's a great need here to be very, very, very patient with family members, okay? Um, I know this video is running so long, but I, I'm, I'm sensing that many of you might need to hear these things um being very patient with family members this is sort of like yes there are things that we sh we can always say okay like like there are things that we can say should we say them probably not okay holding back our tongue being a lot less critical being more loving more understanding and i i feel like that's what's happening here um there is somebody in your life, possibly this water sign, who is teaching you a lot about compassion. Not that you're not compassionate people, you guys are. But you guys don't talk about, you know, for example, and this is like, I've seen this with so many Geminis. You can go to the SPCA website and you, you look at the, the abandoned, you know, animals. And it makes you want to cry. But you don't sit there and say like, oh, this is so sad. I wish I could do something about this. I feel like you internalize it. You know, it goes through your mind that, yeah, this is really sad. I wish I could donate. I wish I could, you know, volunteer. I wish there's something I could do. I wish that people aren't so horrible to all these animals. I, I feel like, you know, you, you, feel, you feel it on a very core, heartfelt level. You don't just sit there and talk about it and you don't cry over it, but you do feel it. And this person, this water sign in your life is kind of like opening up that heart chakra. They want you to talk about these things. What are you feeling? They don't want you to keep everything in. It's not healthy for us to keep everything in. Okay, so I, I feel like they're, they're here to teach you a lot about verbalizing, expressing these things, these needs. Um, I'm also sensing, Gemini, that a lot of the times you might not know what you want because you might suppress things, okay? And so it's really important for us to look at a situation, especially a situation that, that um, stirs some type of an emotional response 
within us. So for example, if you're looking at wounded animals, right? And it, it, it makes you angry because you're probably wondering like, why are people so horrible? Or it makes you feel really sad because you empathize so strongly with the pain these animals are, are going through. And so you have a mixed bag of emotions. And so I feel like you have to verbalize it. I'm angry because it makes me, you know, not believe in human kindness. And I'm angry because it's so unfair. I'm angry that these animals are suffering. Going through the process and really expressing what your heart is feeling will allow you to be a little bit more grounded, okay? So taking this energy away from this, you know, uh, crown chakra and, and planting it in the ground and telling yourself and, and, and not fearing when these emotions, uncomfortable emotions or really strong emotions wash over you. This is sort of like taking that, um, that, that um, checking the water, testing the water before you plunge in, okay? It's safe for you to do that. Okay, it's safe for you to do that. Um, test out the emotional waters. And I feel like <clears throat> the, the presence of this person in your life is really helping you find the voice to really verbalize what you're feeling. Find the voice to be okay with th that emotional expression is what I'm sensing. Um, so they're saying as well, you know, be really, really kind to your family members. I feel like there might have been a lot of family expectations or even like your expectations about family members. Uh, you should have been like this type of a mom to me. You should have been this type of a daughter towards me. You should have been this type of a dad. You should have done this. I should have done that. You know, like regrets. Um things that are not talked about as well because I, I feel like you know life was not a bed of roses for many of you and parents had to do whatever they needed to do in order to make ends meet in order to take care of the physical things in order to put a roof over your head food on the table and a lot of the, the emotional expression the warmth was might have been missing and so you know be be kinder and gentler to the family members, okay, your spouse, your children, be more loving, more nurturing, and especially more expressive, telling each and every one of them, and this is so hard for an air sign to do, it's hard for an air sign to express emotions because it sounds so cheesy in our head, okay? Like if your mom cooks you a really, really good meal, you can tell her, I really, really appreciate um, this, you know, amazing meal that you cooked for me. I know it was a lot of work and I can't thank you enough, okay? And doing that, even when you're so upset with your mom, and then likewise, your spouse, even when you're so upset with your spouse and you come home and, you know, the house is clean, the kids are put to bed, um, and you know there there's food and you you take one bite of the food and you you don't like the way it tastes but you know that they put in a lot of work and effort and and it's so hard to be you know um, it's so hard to be kind when we're upset and I feel like you you have to be in the space you have to train your mind to be in the space to really appreciate the effort okay and I likewise you do a lot for other people too, Gemini's. You do a lot, a lot, a lot. And I feel like you often feel like you're taken for granted. And I feel like, you know, relationships are all about learning. One person needs to express, needs to show the other how to be appreciative, right? It's learned behavior. So you might have to be the one to test the waters and do it first and then see how the other person reciprocates. Okay, it's learned behavior. And we're, some of you could be in your 50s and your 60s watching this and you're, you're just like, uh, my partner's too old to change. And I, I feel like, well, no, it's a mistake. It's learned behavior. It has to start somewhere. So maybe we need to learn more positive ways of relating, more positive reinforcements, more positive behaviors, okay? 
otherwise somebody's going to be feeling very very much left out in the cold underappreciated and just you know never given the opportunity to come into the fold and be enveloped in the warmth and the love of the relationship um i feel like your finances is fine this is more about your emotional state okay and what i'm feeling is it's very relationship oriented learning to express yourself more from that heart space okay gemini's um, I'm sorry that the video ran so long and um, I have one last announcement to make. I'm really, really advocating for um, the the psychic that um, I mentioned last month. You know, she's phenomenal. If you're interested in booking a reading with her, I highly recommend it. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, she's based out of California. Her name is Bridget. And um, if you're in the California region you might and you want a live reading, I feel like you can reach out to her and see if that's um, possible to arrange. I've included a link to her description. Oh, I'm sorry. I've included a link to her scheduling website in the description box below. So if you want to book a reading for yourself, you might I feel like you need a little bit more clarity and certainty here based on this spread. So if that's something that you want to do, I highly recommend her. Um, have a wonderful, splendid March 2019, Geminis. I'll talk to you guys soon.